Hi friends, Danielle here. I'm here today to do a flip through of this large craft text junk journal. And this will be available either you can reserve it by sending me a message through my Etsy shop or it'll be listed in my Etsy shop tomorrow, Friday, May 24th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, either way, so this, let me just let you know the dimensions of this. This one is one, two, three, four, five, like six and a quarter or six and a half ish by nine. So it's got a rounded spine, so it's kind of hard to, you can kind of see. This is made from craft text is the base. I painted it because otherwise you would see the um, craft color through the vintage sheets. And then I did do a doily closure similar to Amity Bloom's everyday journal closure style and I put a little um, vintage not vintage sheet flower that I made just with different layers of sheet and created a little flower there over the closure <clears throat> and I did want to mention I will I will be putting sets of these vintage sheets in my Etsy shop I have them all cut up I just need to figure out how I'm gonna list them and how to figure out what quantity and everything like that so they will be coming and I will let you guys know when they do when I do put them in there but just wanted to let you guys know that if you want to make one of your own using the the sheets all of these sheets that you see they there will be some available in my Etsy shop at some point as well as wallpaper that's coming soon too but that takes a really long time to cut up and do all the things that need to be done for the wallpaper but really quick before I move on I'm hoping um, that if you watched the video of the smaller ones you can kind of see because I forgot to mention what the dimensions were for these so let me one two three four five they're five inches by like a little like seven and a half so you can see the difference so they are smaller <clears throat> Okay, so the way that this is closed is I have the seam binding here that's running through the doily. So to open it, you just pull through here and then the doily will open like this. And then to close it, you would pull this, the doily over and kind of tug on the seam binding gently and then wrap it around the back and take the end, I stitched the end just to keep it from fraying too much. And I'm, excuse me, I'm placing it through the, the little hole in this doily here. And then you just pull it and grab it through. And it just pulls it snug and then you can wrap this around and tuck it under the back. <clears throat> so simple as that and I think it looks really cute I think the doily adds a lot but it doesn't cover permanently you know indefinitely cover any part of the cover or the back cover for that matter um, so when you open it you still have access to all the pretty fabrics on the front and on the back and it does have that same pink chenille fabric kind of on the spine area and the doily is sewn to the back cover so it doesn't cover anything up if you really despise this the book doesn't really need a closure the craft text stays shut pretty much on its own it just kind of molds around whatever you put in it um, if you really don't like this you can just cut go along the edge and cut it off here use the doily somewhere else in the journal and the little flower as well as the seam binding really all right, so let's take a peek inside. We I've used the same uh, pillow fabric on the inside. There's another one of the little fabric flowers here. I took um, a flower from one of the vintage quilts that I told you guys had several holes in it, and I tried to keep. I didn't keep any of the pieces intact that had major holes, but some of them that I did keep, they have these little wear 
marks through them. So by no means is this like a perfect piece of quilt, but I backed it onto a piece of cardstock and stitched around it. And then there's just a little flip up tag here with a, with a cluster of sheet fabric and a little felt button. And then that same greeting card that was in the last one, uh, the last smaller journal, it says, some people know the way to make each day seem more worthwhile. They do the nicest things for you and always wear a smile. They make this world a better place by practicing the art of reaching out to others and by giving from the heart. Amanda Bradley. And so this can be opened or closed into a pocket. There's some vintage trim here and a ticket with some ledger, some hand dyed paper. These are printable images. They are images of apple uh, embroidered flowers. There's some vintage, uh, vintage sheet washi tape. This is some of my all time favorite trim of any vintage trim I've ever found. Um, I found it on Etsy, an Etsy shop, and I ended up getting all that she had because, I mean, this is like so awesome to me. <laughs> it's got this these little chenille type flowers. Let me see if I can bring it closer to the camera so you guys can appreciate this. It's so cool and just colors are amazing. And I made a little vintage wallpaper. I don't know why this is on there wallpaper tag on the little flower and some hand dyed paper on the back and then some wrapping paper and a date book page some music this one has five signatures so it is a little bit larger journal this is a vintage coaster and some scrapbook paper with tea stained paper on the back and a little sheet fabric ruffle with a vintage, uh, not a vintage, a felt button. For this coaster, I had to, I do want to give you a heads up, I had to staple it on there. I couldn't get anything to get this to stick and I didn't want to sew on it um, because there's some wax on the back of this coaster. So I just used my little tiny attacher and added three staples there. Uh, it doesn't go through to the other side because this is a pocket. So I just stuck my stapler in there. This is another large journaling tag with some wallpaper. It's a really cool texture. I need to stitch around this one. Forgot to go back and stitch that one. But I will leave it pretty, just stitch around it and leave it so you can do what you'd like with it. A vintage playing card, some of that pretty floral trim, another different type of wallpaper here. If you saw my last video, there will be, of course, a goodie pack that comes with this with some washi tape and ruffles and more pieces of wallpaper, um, different wallpaper than what you see in here. So there will be plenty to play with and fill this up. Make it your own. A vintage postalette with a little cat. Some manuscript paper and a tab. This is some more vintage trim here. This is from a little Vogart uh, pattern envelope where you would iron this onto like a towel, and decorate the towel yourself. I just fussy cut it out and glued it onto the page. And then this is another one of those envelopes that are made from the music paper and the sheet. This one I stuck some vintage eyelet, I ruffled, stuck that on there. This is an antique postcard. This one's from 1911. Some more wallpaper here in the center and another antique postcard this one is in writing on the back I, i'm pretty sure it's right around the same time as the other one a bingo card playing card this is hand dyed paper as well 
some tea stain paper on the back of that one with a, another sheet ruffle and a playing card. This is a vintage postcard and just a scrap of the scrap of paper. A postalette. These are some of my favorite coasters. I very sparingly use these, but I had to use them in this journal because the color and the theme just goes so perfectly. And I, another piece of vintage wallpaper with a little flower at the top here. Some different wallpaper, another vintage coaster. The center of the signature is a pocket. More wallpaper, you guys are getting the theme. I've used a lot of my floral wallpapers and lots of vintage sheets. More wallpaper. <laughs> I tried to do different things with the tag toppers to keep it interesting. Here's another little, uh, this can be a tuck spot. They will all come with a seed packet. In fact, I can probably just leave this in here. Um, this is, I just punched this heart out of a square and put some lace here. And it can be used either as a tuck spot or just a tab on the paper. You don't have to use it as a tuck spot. With some hand dyed paper, another one of the coasters in that, my favorite line. This is the same one from the Bluebird. And another little um, fussy cut flower from the Vogart, the paint kind where you would iron it on and it would be like paint. Postcard and a recipe card. Some more wallpaper. And another, this is another piece, another coaster from that same pack. Some more vintage trim here, hand dyed paper and sheet ruffle. Some more wrapping paper, postalette. These are some note card stationery pieces. And a playing card. All my favorite things. This is really neat. Um, it almost feels like handmade paper. It might be handmade paper, I'm not sure. But it was purchased from Joanne Fabrics. And it opens, it has really neat texture, soft texture. A memo while you are out sheet. Some more sheet fabric. Kind of speed up here, because I think you guys are getting the gist. More, more wallpaper. A little cluster here, some stationery. These are some Denison seals. I'll make sure that they all come with Denison seal, floral Denison seals to play with. More vintage trim and fabric washi. Another Denison seal. And a little cluster here. This one's one of my favorites that I made. It has some lace. So I punched out some hearts and just layered them with some lace and fabric. It's more of that vintage trim. This is from a vintage tablecloth that's embroidered. And backed onto, I think this is just some cardstock and a vintage playing card. Another coaster. And we made it. You guys stuck with me through all my chattiness of this one. Um, so again, I think I already mentioned this, but I've done a few videos, two videos now. <laughs> so I can't remember what I've said in which one. Um, but if you want to reserve this one, you can. Otherwise, it will be listed in my Etsy shop tomorrow at, tomorrow, Friday, May 24th at 7 p.m. And like I mentioned in my last video, I didn't realize that you guys would feel comfortable with the reservation process, but um, 
I'm perfectly fine with it. I, I might do, like I mentioned, alternating um, times where I'll list journals in my shop at a time and then other times I'll offer reservations and then whatever doesn't get reserved I'll list in my shop. But um, I will include in the description box the price for this so that you guys know before you reach out to me because I don't, I, I mean, that's not really right for you to say, I want to reserve it but not have any idea you know, what the cost is or anything. So if you have any questions, let me know. I'd love to hear what you guys think of these. I'm probably going to do more of these just because I had so much fun using these fabrics and the craft text and everything, and they feel so fun in your hands. Um, but I will be back in another video because this one's pretty long. You know what? This isn't that long. Scratch that. I'm not going to be back. I'm going to do a flip through quickly of this one. I, I'm not sure. I think someone might want to reserve this one, um, but I'm just confirming with a picture. So this may or may not be available, but um, I want to show it anyhow. And this one was made with using, for the cover, was also craft text. And then um, these are all vintage quilt pieces, all of them. So I didn't use the sheets on the outside, but the sheets are on the inside. I wanted to do something different and then this is some like I guess this would be crocheted trim it's really hard to tell on the camera but it's very vintage and maybe even hand crocheted I don't know and so on the front there's just some ticking very plain front so you can choose to do oh for all of these journals they will come with more fabric so any pockets you want to add or whatever you want to do with it there will be more fabric i just didn't want to lock you in with a fabric pocket here or a library card pocket um because these are pretty stuffed let me measure this one one two three four five six a little over six by about nine so about the same size as the other one let's put them side by side so we can see yeah this is a little bit more than nine maybe a quarter of an inch half an inch longer than nine and then about the same width okay so there's some pom-pom trim some stationery and rolodex cards I think it can kind of flip through this one a little bit quicker because it's a lot of the same items. Postalette, a post a note, lots of playing cards and vintage tickets. This is a piece of uh, one of, of the same vintage quilt that the, that the cover is made out of. And you can see here, there was a hole here, so I just kind of squished the fabric a little bit together to kind of close that up. Just gives it a shabby feel. A little cluster, some hand dyed paper, same papers here. Vintage envelope, the sheet fabric envelope. This one is with tea stained paper on the inside instead of music paper. This is a sheet pocket I did make. This is really thin sheet, so I did back it onto just really thin, like regular copy paper. So it's still really pliable, um, but it has a little bit of structure. This is just the extra piece that I had left of the wallpaper. And so I didn't back it or sew on it or anything. I figured I'd stick it in here so you could use it how you want. And then these are just, this is just one of uh, Johanna's little cabinet cards. So the, um, I'm gonna cut the rest of those out and send them along with, you know, spread it out through the journals. A vintage postalette. And another one of those cards with the fabric washi that you can make into a pocket or a tag. And then some ledger papers some note card, note paper. This is a vintage card and ticket and some more wallpaper.
This is some of that digital feed sack fabric, I think. And some tea stain paper on the back and just a cluster here. little collages here and there but nothing too much to where you couldn't really have your own space it's a vintage stationery here these are some of my favorite postcards <clears throat> I don't know if the other one had one of these I don't know if this one had one of these but if it didn't I'll make sure it does I thought it I thought it definitely did but I don't remember showing it but I don't know I'm getting pretty tired this is a vintage postalette that I just treated as a belly band here and then made an a long tag with some of that vintage eyelet and some tea stained paper on the back and a fat a sheet fabric um, tag This is another antique postcard. Mm, this one doesn't have a date, but early 1900s. And then in this pocket, this is all collaged sheet fabric. And some there's some floral wrapping paper, vintage wrapping paper to use and a little postalette. No, not postalette, post a note. And then another post a note and postcard. In this pocket, I left this undecorated so you can add a photo or do some writing there, whatever you wanna add. There's a greeting card in here and another antique postcard. This is Orange Blossom Sweet and Fair with their fragrance fill the air. And there's no writing on the back. A little flower here. Vintage postalette ticket. Some sheet fabric on the side here. Another greeting card. This one is absolutely gorgeous. And a little flower. Rolodex and a guest check. Some trim, fabric washi. This is a nice thick resume paper. Another antique postcard. This one is dated 1911 and the stamp is one cent. And this postalette is just clipped, paper clipped in. So you can choose to do what you want with it. Super cute. And that recipe, floral recipe card, playing cards, tickets, another fabric collaged tag here. I lost track of my little paper clip. Where did it go? Oh, I'll find it somewhere. There it is. Funny story, I'm doing this um, video late and I'm hoping it will actually load to YouTube tonight. But I took my daughter to her cheer practice tonight and then we told her that she could get a new bike because she recently learned how to ride her bike without training wheels for finishing kindergarten and she finishes kindergarten tomorrow we're so excited but I realized oh no we didn't go get the bike so my husband just went up to the store <laughs> tonight we looked online where can we go pick up a bike so we don't have to wait for one to be delivered um, but I'm tired because I myself went to Target and I guess they're having a sale on bikes and so they were all sold out. It's probably not a funny story to you guys, but to me, I'm like, oh goodness. 
I'm going to crash hard tonight. <clears throat> oh, this is, see, I'm losing my concentration. This is a vintage postcard. And this is a piece of a napkin or a table linen. I can't remember that I just cut out. I was going to use this in the actual journal and I thought, let me just put this in this pocket so you can use it however you want. If you want to fussy cut it out or make it into a pocket or a tag or whatever way you want to use it. And that is the end of this one. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the flip throughs. If you have any questions, let me know. The little mini guys, um, I'm probably going to need the weekend to finish these. I thought I could have them done by today, but um, I didn't have, I don't have them done, but they're, they're going to be unembellished. So they're going to be pretty quick. Um, this one with the dog and whoops. This one with the flower have been re like pre requested to be reserved. Um, so it would be these two that are still available, the little girls on them. And, but I'll be back with another video to show you guys that. And then we'll do some fun craft with me. So I appreciate you guys sticking with me. I hope you've enjoyed these flip throughs and I will see you in the next video. Have a good night. Bye.